It all began with an idea to make technology accessible and affordable to everyone. Because access to technology shouldn't be a privilege. Because technology is an essential requirement for human success. Because technology can change the world. 25 years ago, we imagined a world where technology worked seamlessly in service of people, enabling them to fulfill their dreams and do more of what they love. And everything we do today is in support of this dream. Our relentless drive to make technology simpler, to make it more efficient, and to make it work harder for people everywhere. Every person at Dell works in support of one unifying purpose, to deliver technology solutions that enable people everywhere to grow and thrive. It's because of this commitment that we can say, today, we are helping thousands of children in rural China and around the world realize their dream of an education. Today, we provide the tools necessary so scientists can be steps closer to discovering solutions to the world's energy crisis. Today, women in Gautung, South Africa have a chance for a long and healthy life due to early breast cancer detection. Today, our environmental commitment is helping ensure that children in Sri Lanka won't have to suffer the health and environmental effects of e-waste. Today, we are helping small businesses open their doors for the first time all over the world. Today, we are providing technology that is enabling human potential everywhere. Because when technology works better, works harder, in service of people, they thrive. Communities thrive. The world thrives. And so do you. Hello, everyone. Who, who knows who Walt Disney is? Hands up, who's heard of Walt Disney? Must have. Walt Disney. Disney Productions, you all heard of him? So one of the things that Walt Disney did that made him unique and so um, inspirational and able to impact his audiences is when he put his productions on the screen, he would sit in the theater facing the audience to see their reaction. So he had a special seat. So the screen would be here, here would be the audience, Walt Disney would sit and he'd look this way. I've been watching all of you for the last two hours from over there. And I can guarantee you at least 90% of people in this room have sent at least one email, read one email, sent one text, received one text. And, you know, when, the bo when you get back and the boss says, how was the symposium? It was really good. I caught up on all my email. I text my auntie about barbecue at the weekend. It was really good. Do you, do you remember what was on the third slide of the first presentation? Um, um, no. Right, so, in these symposiums, there is an American expression, and it's become kind of almost a European expression, and it's called death by PowerPoint. You know that expression? Right, so, in my slides, you're going to hear many of the same themes as we've already heard. The world's changing. We're consuming IT in a completely different way. If you're going to consume IT, you want to do it with a vendor that's not going to lock you in, that gives you flexibility, drives business agility, takes cost out of the business. All of those things are going to be in my slides. Okay? And I'm going to go through my slides very quickly, and I'm going to get us back on time. Because I cannot give you all of the information about the quality and the capability of my technology up here, even if I had two hours. Even if I had three hours, I couldn't do it. So what I'm going to ask you to do is on the Dell booth, outside this door, there's a goldfish bowl and the goldfish has gone missing, okay? So what I want you to do is to drop your card into that bowl, and you know, there's no such thing as a free lunch. If you drop your card into that bowl, one of you will go away with a 12-inch uh, Gorilla Glass hardened Inspiron tablet from Dell, which is a fantastic device, and you'll be the envy of all your friends. So that's what I'd like you to do. 
And then we can contact you and say, let us talk to you specifically about what you're trying to do and where our technology might fit. So I'm just going to give you a flavor today in order for you to get the full understanding of why Dell should be your partner of choice with VMware. We need to talk to you one-on-one, -on -one, and that's what I'd like us to do. So, my goal here then is very simple. It's not to say, can you remember what was on Tony Wan's third slide? Because I won't remember what was on my third slide by the time I get to the airport. So that's impossible. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to get you to just remember three things. Okay, I'm going to dispel a myth. Does everyone understand what a myth is? It's kind of a, a story that actually really isn't true and it's kind of just, you know, propagated through people saying, did you know that? And the story gets kind of just muddled. So I'm going to dispel some of those myths. Now, I'm a part-time motivational speaker and coach because I like the sound of my own voice, I love being on stage, and I love working with Shaw microphones. I have one of these at home. In fact, I have three of these at home. So, one of the things I want you to do in order to make sure you remember these three things, I'm going to ask you to be involved, and that means you're not going to be able to look at email or send text for the next 28 and a half minutes. Okay? So, let's visualize. First thing I want to do is to make sure that we're all involved in these myths. So, I want you to work with me now. I want everybody, when I count to three, I'll go one, two, three. And when I do, I just want you to give me one clap. Right there. Can you do that? Everybody nod. Yes, Tony. Ready? Okay. Hands out. One, two, three. Rubbish. Together. It has to be together, otherwise this doesn't work. Ready? One, two, three. Okay. Now, remember that sound. Let's just do it again. Now, really listen to the sound now. Ready? One, two, three. Kind of sounds like a branch cracking, doesn't it? Yeah? So I want you to imagine a great big tree trunk sized branch, and we're going to call that the myth. Okay? Now, just here, I want you to imagine, on this stage here, there's a great big tree that has myth written on it, and that myth is, Dell is only a PC manufacturer and shouldn't be in the data center. That's a myth. Now, we're going to dispel that myth. The next thing I want you to imagine is that I am 30 feet tall. Okay? That happens to me a lot. You know, a lot, when people first meet me, they say, Tony, you sounded a lot taller on the phone. So, here's our myth. I'm 30 feet tall. I'm the myth-dispelling giant in the IT industry. And I'm going to walk up to this myth. I'm going to pick this tree trunk up. And I'm going to go, one, two, three. No, together. Together, right? Tree trunk, giant. One, two, three. Myth dispelled. Dell is not just an IT PC manufacturer. We provide end-to-end -end solutions. Number two, Dell is predominantly a direct organization. Over three years ago, Dell set out on a journey to change fundamentally the way that it did business from a 90% plus build to order. You phone us and say, I'd like a PC with this screen size, this disk size, this much memory, and, and latterly, whatever color you want it in, and we will deliver it to you. Okay, that was kind of where we came from. That's our heritage. Where we need to go in the future is a build to stock, i.e., we build component-based open standards technology which can be consumed via a partner organization. So our partners, VMware being a key one, 
our channel partners, our distributors, uh, ACC, who are here supporting this event with us today, are critically important to our success. So, myth number two, Dell is predominantly a direct build-to-order organization. There's the tree trunk. I'm the 30-foot giant. Let's dispel that. I'm going to pick the tree trunk up, and I'm going to go one, two, three, no. All together, come on, time in now, ready? One, two, three. Okay, that's that myth dispelled. So that's the first two. We'll save the last myth till the end, okay? Because at some point, I do need to get to some slides, but I'll go through them really quickly, okay? So, virtualization, the cloud. Can you cover that topic in 30 minutes? No. Here's a really important safety tip, okay? Never invite me to a dinner party and then say, Tony, do you know anything about cloud computing and virtualization and can you tell me? Because that happened recently. Because if you use any kind of product somewhere, there's going to be cloud this, cloud that. And one of the people I was sitting having dinner with saying, you know, this kind of cloud has appeared in my iTunes and there's now iCloud. What does that mean? Now, this person didn't know me very well. The other people around the table did know me very well. And when she asked that question, everybody went, here we go. So three hours later, all the wine has been consumed. Most of the other guests are asleep on the sofa. And the lady that asked me the question looks like this. So it's a big subject. There's not one way to do it. There are multiple journeys to the cloud. Cloud is a journey. We've heard that. It's a common theme. Okay? So it's not something you can say, as, a, as my colleague just said, here's a brand new shiny cloud. You're now cloud ready. Away you go. Okay? There are multiple paths to the journey, there are, uh, uh, to the cloud. There are multiple cloud solutions. There are multiple ways to consume that, that um, uh, cloud based technology. The underlying reason that we need to get there is, as we said, the world is changing and the way that we consume compute power has changed dramatically. So, how many people in here have ever used or administered an IBM System 390? Anyone? Am I really that old? Wow. Okay. So, we talked about the journey and, and kind of how the world has changed, okay? Now, I wasn't actually in this in the 50s. I'm not that old, okay? But at that time, it was mainframe. We had a single processing capability, and we time-sliced and gave that uh, processing power to individual users. In the 60s, you know, that became, A, very expensive. It wasn't very available, it was very high cost, so the mini era, the DEC, VAX. Okay, and then in the 80s, which is when I got into this era, when, you know, does, that, does anybody remember what um, um, leg warmers are? Does anybody remember leg warmers? No? Hello? Anybody in? No? Leg warmers, they were kind of like bottomless socks, and, and you bought those in really bright colors, and you wore them on the outside of your jeans to the disco with your permed hair. 80s, fantastic era. So, you know, you're too young, right? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, 90s internet era, okay? And that, again, if you think about what happened to the internet, do you remember kind of that tipping point? The first year where we said, you know, I'm gonna order a lot of my Christmas presents online. Yeah, it kind of just, it didn't happen overnight. It got to a tipping point where it said, yeah, I think I'm going to do that. And now, how many of you, and I suspect it's zero, could get by a whole day without in some way, shape, or form touching the internet? Almost impossible, right? Live on a farm, right? <laughs> so, the virtualization era. Okay, again, it is reaching that inflection point where we are all thinking about it. The reason that you're here is probably because you're thinking about it and you want to understand how do I make this 
relevant to my organization? What is it that I should be thinking about and, and who should I be partnering with in my journey to the cloud? It's been said at least two or three times here, it's not just one path. It's not just a solution. It is a journey too. And I think the most important part of that is this is no longer IT is one side of the business and the business is the other side of the business. IT now forms the business. It's not a nice to have. Business agility is not competitive advantage. It's you need to have that to stay in business. Okay, and virtualization and cloud computing gives you that capability. But again, there are different ways of doing that. Now, this is a slide directly from Gartner. I think there's a typo in it here, actually, because it says uh, lead to, there you go. So over time, hybrid cloud computing should say will lead to rather than cloud lead to. But they wanted to get cloud in there one more time. Okay, so just cloud. Uh, Multiple cloud platforms making up a single cloud. So, you know, is it on-premise? Is it off-premise? Is it a combination between the two? That's the way the industry is going, saying you cannot or do not want to get into a one single solution that locks you in, doesn't give you the flexibility. It drives, fundamentally, conversations around a number of strategies, okay? So, those key strategies are the same as they were 10 years ago. How do I be competitive? How do I um, deliver operational excellence? How do I drive cost out of the business? How do I get more customers? How do I build better products faster? All of those things that the cloud will give you. And what do we want from that? Fundamentally, virtualization should deliver if deployed properly, and cloud solution deployed properly, simplification of your IT infrastructure, consuming compute power in a much more efficient way. So automation, being able to simplify the provision of compute resource and scale that resource up and down as needed using four, far more an OPEX model than a CAPEX model is what it should be delivering. So as a CXO, a CIO, okay, you're trying to reduce or eliminate the complexity. You know, hide that complexity. Reduce what is fundamentally a 80% to keep the lights on model. Okay, we have less and less money to innovate. And what we want to move towards is if I can reduce the cost of my infrastructure by simplifying, by being able to be operationally more agile, I can drive cost out of the business. And this is what Dell has been doing and is doing, and all of its past three to four years acquisition trail. And if you've, if you've been watching the acquisition trail for Dell, you'll see we've, we've made a lot of acquisitions in the last three to four years. And I, I know because I came to Dell as one of those acquisitions. And at the time, I had the same view of Dell as probably many of you might have done, which is, oh, Dell, that's the, that's the notebook manufacturer, right? So I came in from Equilogic, which is one of the storage platforms that Dell bought about five, six years ago. And at that time, when that acquisition was made, my first thought was, well, I, I don't want to work for a PC manufacturer. At the time, I was just about to migrate or emigrate to Cypress, which is now where I live, to write a book and establish another sales training coaching company, which I might do at some point. So I said to the VP at the time, I'll stay for two quarters I'll do the handover, and then I'm leaving, and I'm going to go and sit with my uh, typewriter on my veranda looking at the sea and type my book and build my company. That was six years ago. I haven't left. Why have I stayed? Because Dell now is a company that can pretty much walk into a client and say, the answer is yes. What's the question? 
from end to end, from the point where data is created, through the infrastructure, through the security, to where that data resides and long-time archive, or we have an end-to-end -end solution. And we've done that through some very aggressive acquisition strategy. Dell's primary goal here was to try and overcome some of the challenges, okay? So many people have seen you know, slides of this type. It's not particularly clear here, but in essence, legacy systems were expensive to buy. They lock you in. They're expensive to run, okay? Newer proprietary systems, okay, would show you operational savings, but they were very expensive to buy into. And in the bottom right hand here is commodity-based systems and services, which is a self-service model. You buy the components, you put them together, you build your own solution. Again, the capital cost might be lower, but operational costs go up because you add complexity and you add administrative tasks that are repetitive that eat into your resource that's running your IT department. So Dell's goal in its acquisition, in its design, in its marketing, in the products we bring to market is to provide our customers the opportunity to not only reduce their OPEX, but reduce their COPEX, their CAPEX, by building our technology based on open standards. So one of the terms you'll hear from Dell is open, affordable, and capable. We build our systems on open standards and have done since day one. So there's no lock-in. It's a journey. We don't, if, we, if we had the opportunity to say, let me paint a picture here. If your financial director came to you today and said, we've just had a windfall of $30 million, and I'm going to say that you can have an option to take everything that's in your data center out and replace it with completely new infrastructure, and it won't disrupt the business. Would you say, yes, I want some, please? We probably would, right? But that's not reality. We have to take a journey. We have to go from where we are to where we need to get to. Dell's philosophy here is, that's fine with us. Consume as you want to, either as buying at a component level or buying as a complete end-to-end -end service uh, from Dell and from our partners. So where we believe we've got to is kind of overcoming that challenge of some of our competitors' solutions aren't end-to-end. -end. They're incomplete. Maybe they're inflexible because they give you some lock-in. Complex and expensive. What we think we've had, uh, able to do is provide solutions that are scalable, easy to manage, a lot of automation, and a lot of that capability has been driven by the advent of virtualization. And now, Virtualization isn't just about the server layer, as we've heard multiple times from my colleagues here. You have to virtualize the whole compute stack from the storage to the networking to the server and the management. And that's where we are on our journey, okay? And we've done that by investing in uh, a number of acquisitions over the last four years. So when I show this slide, Many of the, uh, the organizations that are, that are up here, some people have said, I, I didn't know that you did that, and what do they do? So I just want to point out a, a couple of key ones when it comes to deploying virtualized infrastructure. One is Gale Technologies, okay, leading software house that provide unbelievably simplified and effective feature-rich management of virtualized environments, which means we can automate, template, um, simplify the deployment of compute power. Boomi, which gives us the ability to take existing applications and make them cloud ready. Um, SecureWorks and uh, SecureWorks and um, Case. Together, those two. Vendors give us the ability to provide incredibly secure environments that can, we can deploy incredibly quickly. So we've built a fantastic array of products that allow us to overcome this problem. And if you come to my breakout session later, and I've got seven and a half minutes left, this is where I start to go really fast, overcome this problem, which is you know, the whole siloed challenge can be broken out of if we get into a virtualized uh, environment, where this is where we want to move to, okay? 
single management pane, which allows you to deploy all of the compute power and all the compute technology necessary to meet your business objectives. It is a journey. You can't do it in one step. And most of us are somewhere along this journey. Our kind of, if you like, uh, headline deliverable in this space is our converged infrastructure and our capability around our active system. So, kind of as a simple schematic, the area that I'm going to talk about in the breakout session is our converged infrastructure and how you can consume that and how that takes cost out of the business, how it provides flexibility, um, how it increases business agility, and how you can consume that on an as you need to grow, scale up, scale down. Gartner is saying that one third of all compute power in the next few years is going to be consumed as converged infrastructure. We won't buy storage as a single decision. We won't buy networking as a single decision. We won't buy servers as a single decision. We will buy converged infrastructure that deploys fast, is simple to manage, can scale up and scale down, so I can buy technology based on my current requirements rather than try and anticipate what my future requirements might be. So, in order to achieve that, as I said, Dell went through a whole range of acquisitions that give us the components necessary to deploy a simplified, easy to manage, converged, virtualized infrastructure. So, from, from the compute power, storage, network, uh, management, deployment and support, all the way through that stack. Again, if I wanted to drill down into each one of those, I could be here next week and still not talking, and you probably want to hang me by then. So I'm not going to, but we'll go into a little bit more depth on why these technologies work so well together and what that looks like in terms of a product. What it looks like in terms of a product is this, converged infrastructure. Look, it's a rack that's got disk, it's got server, it's got management capability, it's got flashing lights. You could change the badge and that could read anybody's. It looks the same. Dell's difference is we've actually simplified that and made it much easier to consume um, by putting it into very, very well-designed, standards-based technology. We have the densest server rack, in, the densest server blade in the industry. We have the densest storage capability. We have an array that sits on a blade that sits inside our, our chassis. So our compute power is very condensed, which does all those things we've talked about, reduce power consumption, increase flexibility, reduce complexity, simplify management. The other thing that I wanted to make sure we dispelled the myth was that Dell isn't really a player in this region. Okay? So I think it would be true to say that Dell as an organization hasn't been as active here as we would have liked to have been in the past few years. What I can tell you now is Dell takes this region incredibly seriously. Whilst this region, as far as I'm concerned personally, isn't what I would consider to be an emerging market, the world and organizations kind of group countries together and call them regions. This region sits in what we call emerging markets, okay? Dell's, one of Dell's cornerstones of its strategy is that we must ignite this territory, our emerging territory. And emerging, I am the business manager for consumer products across emerging, which is 104 countries for us, from Russia all the way down through Poland, Central and Eastern Europe, Middle East, Africa, right down to kind of Central and the rest of Africa. So that's 106 countries. I never see home. And when I do go home, I tie a, a lamb chop bone around my neck so the dog will play with me and won't bite me when I walk in. I send a picture home to my kids and say, I'm your father, I'm coming home. Please open the door when I ring the bell. So I'm never home. So it is very big and it's a very diverse territory and if we had again a magic wand I'm the closest to a magic wand they've got by name Tony wand remember that name that's the other thing four things my name 
Tony Wand. Because if stuff isn't happening, you can call me directly. I'll leave my number here and you can call my mobile phone, okay? So, the other myth is Dell is not interested. Dell is not active. Dell doesn't have capability in this territory. And just to make sure that you're all still awake, and I've got one and a half minutes just to do this third myth, Dell is active. Dell has support capability and distribution capability, delivery capability in this area, okay? The myth was that we don't. There's the myth. I'm the 30-foot giant. You're the sound effect. Ready? One, two, three. Really good. Third time you really got that nailed. So let me just, in the last few seconds I have here, say we have now improved our support capability to include on-site, mission-critical, in certain areas up to two-hour, uh, providing things like keep your own disk if you've got a critical environment from a from a, a, a data perspective on your storage drives. And we have all now of the higher level uh, uh, corporate high-end support capability necessary to be confident of partnering with an organization who are going to run your data center. I think you know, if you weren't working with VMware as a hardware manufacturer, then, then you wouldn't be in business. And I think we've all had a slide on how long we've been working with VMware and what a great partner we are with them. And, you know, I would be remiss if I didn't have similar sorts of slides. Um, I think this one kind of sums it up, you know, kind of a statement from a senior executive in VMware, a statement from a senior executive at Dell. We like each other. We play well together. We share information. We go to parties together. You know, we kind of, we, we work together and, uh, our solutions are very closely integrated, particularly from a storage perspective. And from my own personal perspective, I remember when I was just responsible for one product, which was Equilogic Storage. I, I've never seen tighter integration in, in one of the key specific areas, which is uh, the disaster recovery. Okay, not just fail over, uh, but fail back. I've never seen a, a, a more slick, better integrated disaster recovery solution than VMware and Dell's Equilogic solution. So, the bottom line is, we have pre-configured, pre-tested, know that they work solutions for VMware to allow you to take whatever step on the journey towards your ultimate end goal, which is to be in the cloud. Okay, we're all going to be in the cloud one day, but this is the, the step towards. And you now should, having dispelled the myths, consider Dell the next time you think I need to do something in the data center that's going to give me agility, reduction in cost, improved flexibility, greater levels of security, and the ability to grow as fast as I want to grow and scale up or scale down. And if anybody locally doesn't give you the ability to do that, my name is Tony Wand. If you go to our stand outside and put your card in the goldfish bowl, not only could you win a fantastic tablet with Gorilla Glass. Who knows what Gorilla Glass is? It's great. You can jump up and down this stuff and it doesn't break. So it's not like dropping your, your PDA and you go, oh, the screen scratched. It doesn't do that. Okay, so you can win that. But it also gives your link in to me. So if anything that I've said isn't delivered locally, if anybody says, no, you can't do that, Call me, I'll come back, and I'll fix it for you. Thank you for participating. Thank you for most of you not sending emails and, and texts, because most of you haven't. Um, if you've enjoyed this presentation, my name is Tony Wand. If you haven't, my name's Walt Disney. Thank you for listening.